Hello, hello. What's going on, my friends? Patrick here. So every once in a while, a piece of gear comes along and I'm like, damn, I wish I had that when I was first starting out. I think price point and ease of use and features and functionality kind of all have to blend together in this perfect storm to create a piece of gear that will not only work for a beginner, but also somebody at the intermediate level, and also something that will kind of grow with you as you grow as a musician. So when Akai sent me the MPK Mini Play, and again, thank you to them for that, I was kind of going to run through my normal routine, talk about some specs, briefly touch on the internal sounds, but not really highlight that. Because honestly, I really wasn't expecting much out of the built-in sounds. I figured they would be pretty basic, just something that you would use kind of sitting with the keyboard in standalone mode. But as I started to explore these internal sounds, I was really impressed. And I think this is going to be a great keyboard for a lot of people. If you have an interest in synthesizers and hardware, stuff like that, I think this is a great first piece that covers a lot of basics. So I want to quickly play for you a little song that I made using the MPK Mini Play, using only the internal sounds and presets. I'll show you some of the things that I did in DAW to kind of get the most out of these sounds and also what I was doing with the different effects on the keyboard itself. But let's take a listen to the music and then we will break it down. So I wanted to try to use a little bit of everything in this tune just to kind of showcase the variety of presets that you get with the MPK Mini Play. Starting with the drum kits, there's 10 kits. There are a couple of kits that I really like. I primarily used the TR-808 set. Let's just take a listen to that quick. The kick sound that I'm using is actually from the standard set. You can hear that. And all I really did to this was a little bit of EQ and some saturation, and I think it sounds great. Claps and hats both came from the TR-808 set. And with the claps, I just gave myself two layers, did a little panning to spread them out a little bit. And then one of these clap layers, I just used sound shifter, brought it down three semitones just to make it feel like there were two different claps in there. And nothing too crazy going on with the hats. Used a little chorus just to widen those hi-hats a little bit. And this chorus is just the standard Logic chorus. So nothing too fancy going on there. Now this open hi-hat layer, we go back to the standard set. And then when we get to this hook section down here, I added in a snare with my claps just to give it a little bit more oomph. And for this sound, I went back to the TR-808 set. And then with EQ, I filtered out a lot of the lows and the highs just to give this kind of a little bit more of a muted kind of a sound. And then the last thing that I'm adding in is this little sound effect noise. And this is the one sound that I used from the sound effect set. It's this sample here. It's literally somebody screaming. But if you just hit it quickly, I don't know, it just sounded kind of cool to me. Maybe like a vinyl record scratch. But I've also got some pretty extreme EQ on this one. I added the Pan Man from Sound Toys, which is just helping this kind of pan back and forth from left to right. And then, of course, we got some reverb on there as well. But that's the drum beat. The one thing that I did add in that was not from the internal sounds on the MPK Mini Play 
was the shaker sound. Couldn't really find a sample that I could use for a shaker. So just went with a standard Logic shaker sound for this one. Nothing too crazy. But I do really think there's a lot of usable drum sounds in these drum presets. Now let's go up here to some of the instrument layers. I was playing through some of the keys presets and it really wasn't until I got to some of the synth sounds that I really started to perk up. So the first sound that you hear is this pad sound. That is preset number 90. It is pad two, warm. And I think I just pulled the filter back a little bit. So I dialed in that sound that I was looking for with the filter and resonance, and then, you know, you can add in chorus and reverb as you like. And then I just recorded separately the low bass note. Just kind of fill it out a little bit. Moving on to piano and electric piano sounds, you have a number of different options. This electric piano too is probably my favorite. It's the one I used here. I think the piano and electric piano sounds definitely benefit from recording in stereo. I actually ran to the store real quick before I started shooting this video to grab this stereo splitter because I didn't have one before and it makes such a big difference. I will link one that I recommend in the description below for you if you're looking for one. Really started to have fun when I started looking at some of the bass sounds. So I got to these synth based presets. I liked the second one a little better than the first one. But I wanted to play with the filter. The resonance. I also came over here to the attack and the release. Took the release time down to make it a little bit more punchy and staccato. And that's pretty much how we got the bass sound. Got a few different effects on here, actually. Got some EQ, obviously. I'm trying out these new Lander effects plugins and they sound pretty good. So I threw that on there and just some RC20 as well. Now we also have these two pedal tones going. I have a low octave going pretty much throughout the course of the entire track. And then in the hook section, I guess, I have a higher octave of that pedal tone. <laughs> So that is the lead to Sawtooth preset. 
And I've got one layer just playing an octave. Filtered that down. That's how we got one of the layers. Now the other layer is just an octave up, but it's not quite as filtered as the other one. And then on both of these layers, I have Sound Toys Pan Man. Just kind of wanted both of these to sit in the background and modulate back and forth between right and left. What else, what else, what else? Oh, the synth brass. One of my favorite textures in all of synthesizer music. All right, so we have two synth brass options. Synth brass one, and of course synth brass two. I think I like the second one. This is the first one. Second one. Yeah, I like the second one just a little bit, just a little bit more mild. This one has a little different attack and delay going. The other one kind of starts out a little punchier. Let's grab our filter. You want a little bit of that resonance, right? Let's really punch it. There it is, that's right, right on, right on the sweet spot. Then we gotta go over here to our attack and delay, excuse me, our attack and release. You can have kind of a slow attack. So that pretty much does it for the track. And yeah, I really dig this MPK Mini Play. I think previous versions of this keyboard kind of got shrugged off as just kind of like a novelty beginner device. And this can definitely be that, but I also think it has some pretty serious music making, beat making capabilities as well. Getting into hardware sense is a lot of fun. and something that I definitely recommend. I really like my Juno 06A. But as you can see, there's a lot to learn with a device like this. There's a lot to learn about synthesis. There's a lot to learn about what all of these knobs and faders do. And with something like the MPK Mini Play, you have a lot of built-in sounds like a synthesizer. But Akai, I think, have found a really nice sweet spot between giving you enough control, but also not overwhelming you with a lot of different tweakable parameters. The MPK Mini Play makes it really easy to just like jog through sounds, find something that you like, tweak it really quickly, and then record and make a full song. If you watch my videos, you know that I get really excited about gear that really simplifies the music making process. So being able to compose like a quick little instrumental song, little beat here in like less than an hour is really cool. And I think this is going to be a really helpful piece of gear to a lot of people. So do me a solid, drop a like down below if you enjoyed this video. You can check out these videos right over here if you want some more information on the Akai MPK Mini Play. But that's going to do it for today's video, my friends. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.